Hey guys, it's Hope. Today I'm here to share with you the best and worst of Maybelline. I did do this video about, I did a best and worst of Maybelline about a year and a half to two years ago. It might have been two years ago now. No, it would have been like a year and a half ago. And I have gotten so many new products since then. I might end up repeating a few products just because like there's ones that I love so much that I just end up repeating again. And then there's a lot of new stuff. So I have 18 products to share with you. So this video might be long, you might want to grab a cup of coffee, whether it's in the morning, some tea, hot chocolate, maybe a three course meal because you're probably going to be sitting here for a while. And yeah, without further ado, let's just hop right into the video. I always start in order, so we are going to start off with primer. This is the Maybelline Master Prime by Face Studio. It is the, they have like different kinds. This one's the Blur and Smooth. So I've squeezed the heck out of this product, as you can tell. I use this straight for like quite a few months because I didn't really have any other primers. I only own a few primers, just which might be kind of surprising to you, just because I just don't have a lot of primers and the ones I have I really love. This primer I used to wear and I was like, ah, oh, I like it, but I don't really know. And then I tried the Becca Backlight and I was like, love the Becca Backlight. Like this one is nothing compared to it. I go back and forth between this one. This one is actually a pretty good primer. I think it does help make your makeup last a long time. Do I think it's as good as the Becca Backlight? No, but it's also not like an illuminating one. So it's not really a fair comparison. I don't think this makes your makeup last as long as like a Becca, the Becca one does, but it definitely makes your makeup last longer than if you weren't wearing it, if you know what I mean. So I don't think this is a bad primer. I think this is a better primer from the drugstore. And I think it does do a pretty good job of blurring and just kind of evening out your skin tone um, or evening out just kind of all your pores and just blurring everything. So I do think it does a really great job of that. It does make your makeup last quite a while. So I really do like this a lot. I don't have anything bad to say about it. So I definitely, I would definitely want to try other ones from this line because I don't know, I don't think this is a bad primer. The next product is the Maybelline Fit Me Foundation. I think this is the only Maybelline foundation I own. And I feel like I'm like forgetting one, but I think it is. I think that this is a very good foundation. I love this one for everyday natural use. This is kind of my go-to lately for if I just want a natural dewy foundation, just make your skin look great. I've been actually reaching for this one more than like my Revlon Color Stay. I think it's more because of the shade, but this one's great for even like this time of the year because it just makes your skin look naturally dewy and just really pretty. So I love this one a lot. And I've had this one for about a month and a half now probably and have been using it a lot, like all the time whenever I want a natural foundation. So I really like this one. And it's not just natural, like it gives you a medium coverage, but it makes your skin just look good. Okay, you guys, I honestly think I have an obsession with Maybelline concealers because I own two, four, six seven Maybelline concealers, so most of my concealers are Maybelline, which is really funny. I don't know how that happened, but I just gravitate towards Maybelline concealers, and I think they're really awesome. My favorite ones are the Maybelline Fit Me. This has always been a favorite. Um, right now I'm in 10 light. I actually probably should get 20 sand, to be honest. I also have 15 fair, but that would be more my winter shade. I'm literally like scraping the, I don't know if you can tell, I'm scraping it out of the 10 shade, so I'm going to have to repurchase that. But I've repurchased this many times. I've probably had like four or five of these, to be honest. I think I mentioned this in my other one, my other Maybelline Best and Worst, but this is a great, great concealer. It's great for highlighting or like concealing on your eyes. That's what I really like it for. Blemishes, it's pretty good, but I don't necessarily reach towards this one for blemishes. But I will. I actually do conceal blemishes with this, but if you want a full coverage for blemishes, this is not it. This one's great for under your eyes. And another one, I just love the packaging of that one too. It's just a classic doe foot applicator and I, don't know, I just really like it. Another one that I really like is the Age Rewind. Uh, a lot of people talk about this. It's one where you take the cap off and you twist it and it's got that sponge applicator. Kind of put it on your eyes. I just found out that this actually has like dark circle treatening like ingredients in here that helps treat dark circles. I don't know if it really does. I don't have that bad of dark circles but I do like this for concealing under my eyes. It's very brightening. It's not going to be like a thick heart shape tape concealer but it's definitely like a brightening one and it's more of a natural one which I like. This is in the shade the neutralizer so it's kind of a yellow toned but once you blend it out it looks great and it's perfect. Um, another one that's newer to me that I've been really enjoying is the Maybelline Dream Lumi Touch Camouflage Concealer. 
This one's in the shade 20 light. So 20 light and that's 10 light. They need to work on their shades. So this is another one where it's the, I don't know why I'm holding the products. The brush tip applicator and you twist this bottom here and product comes up through there. I really do like this. I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of the brush, but I do like it for concealing under my eyes. This is a very like highlighting concealer, which I like, so I like to put on my nose. Um, and I will do it under my eyes. I don't conceal like blemishes with this, but I do think this is a good one for brightening. I just dropped it. I haven't even had it for that. I suppose it's been. I haven't even had it for that long, and I've used quite a bit of it, so I don't know. I feel like I went through it kind of fast, but I really do like this. I really like all of these. This Maybelline Master Conceal. This one's more of a thicker coverage, and I've squeezed the heck out of this one too. I really do like this, and putting it under my eyes, I like it. It's a little bit more, if I need something a little bit heavy, not heavier, but like a little bit more for full coverage under my eyes, I go for this one, because it's like the Master Conceal. It's a little bit more of a thicker concealer. This is in the shade 20 Light, which is a little light for me, but fine for under the eyes right now. It's a little, I've heard, I was looking back on a video, and some, and I had said that this Product was a little too dark for me in the winter, so I don't really know, but I had said that in a video, so, I mean, maybe I was crazy, but I, I don't know. But, yeah, so I have this shade 20 light, and this is good, it says to cover dark circles, and it is a very good fuller coverage for under your eyes, so I really like that. And lastly is the Maybelline Superstay Better Skin Concealer. So this is the only concealer from Maybelline that I'm just, like, not, I don't have, like, a full-on opinion that I'm, like, either I love it or hate it. It's just, like, good concealer. I'm in the shade 10 Ivory. I do like this one for concealing under my eyes as well. This swatch right here is the Better Skin. The other one is the Fit Me. The Fit Me is kind of gray toned. I do think that the Better Skin might have the slightest bit, a little bit more coverage, but not a whole lot. Um, I do like this one for under my eyes. It's not like anything... I don't know, when I look at this one, I don't just like gravitate towards it, but it's not a bad concealer. So I don't know, I just have other ones that I just end up reaching for more than. But if you've been eyeing this one up, I think you would like it. It does conceal under your eyes pretty well, and yeah, um, none of these I would really reach for for blemishes necessarily. Besides, well, yeah, maybe the Master Conceal. Um, if they have a, I have like a heavy duty concealer from uh, Heart Candy that I like to use for blemishes, but this one's still not bad. A Maybelline brow product is the Brow Drama, the Shaping Chalk. I did a video, I will link it in the eye if you haven't seen it on this. It actually got quite a few views, surprisingly. This is not like a bad product at all. This is gonna drive me crazy. It's literally this applicator that has like, it's like a spatula. Literally like a spatula, but it's like full of powder. And you put it on your brows, and it's a little bit more of a warm tone. You can swatch it right here. Ooh. It's, it actually is a little cooler tone. I think the reason why I didn't love this as much either was the shade. This is not really a bad product. Is it for me? No. But if somebody really liked this, like, this makes your brows look like you don't really, can, you can't really see the hairs on your brows. So it really looks like you have, like, drawn on brows. But if you like that, I don't think it's a bad product. I think it fills it in nicely. I think it... I didn't really wear test it for many hours in a day, but I didn't. I thought it wore pretty well. Um, and this shade is nice and grayer, more gray tone. I kind of wish I would have gotten a lighter shade because I think that was part of my problem. My brows got so dark, and I'm trying to make sure. I'm trying not to. Let, I'm trying to lighten my brows up a little bit because I do um, highlight and dye my hair blonde. The natural hair color is darker like this. I wonder if I should grow my hair out and just let it be natural. But that's my natural hair color. It's like this darker color. And all this is like, I've dyed it. So, and this is my natural hair, by the way, if you wondered. It's a little crazy, but. I'm trying to fill in my brows a little bit lighter and not use darker products, but I don't think this is a bad product. And I think if you are into this stuff, you would like it. It's just not something for me, personally. It's more of a personal preference. Oh my gosh, I forgot to mention this. This is the Maybelline Master Camo Concealer. This is um, the green one. So there's a bunch of different shades for different skin concerns. This is the green one and I use this one for like redness. So if I have a pimple, like a red pimple on my face and I put this on and kind of conceal it and then put the concealer over, it's supposed to help tone the redness down. I haven't had to test it out on a major blemish yet because I haven't had any lately. Knock on wood. But if I do need it, I do like it. I have covered up a little bit of redness and I do think it helps. The green is supposed to cancel it out, and this is what it looks like. It is a very, like, neon green, 
surprisingly I don't know why it's this neon but like I covered it up with concealer and I didn't have a problem with it showing through so I think that's really good and it's green obviously but like the concealer on top blended it out and covered it up nicely so I didn't have a problem with that and I thought it did a pretty good job rosacea or anything I can't speak for that but like little blemishes it did help I have two eyeshadows I don't know about the second one I think they have this shade but it's like newer this I've had for a while these are like the Maybelline single shadows I have an a new glow and tastefully taupe New Glow is a very pretty, like, rose gold shade. Like, very pretty. It's right there. And these are only $2.99, you guys. That is insane. That is so cheap for, like, an eyeshadow, especially from the drugstore. Like, the L'Oreal ones, infallible ones, they're, like, 6 or 7 seven ninety nine, six ninety nine. dollars 99 I don't know. Those are, I mean, they're not expensive compared to high-end ones, but they're still kind of spendy. This isn't tastefully taupe. Oh, these are pretty shades. I do really like these a lot, and I think they're really, like, they're worth $2.99. Like, these are worth, like, the same price as those L'Oreal ones, just about. And so, this is a really good deal. So, if you have an eye up a shade from this line, I would definitely go pick it up. Other shades really stand out to me from this line, just because, I think it's because I have so many other eyeshadow palettes that I have all these shades already as it is. But these are very good shadows if you're running. I've heard that there's a couple hit or miss, but these two are good. I have three mascaras. I definitely tried many Maybelline mascaras over the years, but these are the three I own. Maybelline Last Sensational. This mascara, I swear, is mentioned in every single video of mine. Hands down, favorite mascara of all time. Drugstore High End, my favorite. Love this stuff. Um, it just lengthens, volumizes, curls. It just makes your lashes just look amazing, especially when you first open it. So I love this stuff. This is the Maybelline The Colossal Big Shot. When I first opened this, I was like, eh. I don't really like this, but now that I have it, I don't mind it. Now, I think I go for more rubber bristle wands, like the Maybelline Last Sensational, like the Last Sensational one. Um, this one's, it's not rubber. Um, and it is kind of like tapered a little bit, but it's not a bad mascara. It's just more for natural days, and it's a little bit of a drier formula, which is kind of surprising. I feel like Maybelline creates wetter formula mascaras, and this one's a little bit more dry than the other ones. But this one's not bad. Is it, is it flexible? No. Um, but I don't mind this, but it's more of like a natural mascara day. So if you're more of a ma natural mascara lover, you would probably like this one. It does create a nice little bit of a curl, but nothing too extravagant like Gloss Sensational. Lastly is the Maybelline The Falsies Volume Express. This one I have a kind of a little bit of a love-hate relationship. Well, it's more of a love relationship. Um, first of all, this bristle, like look at this. See how bendy this is? It's like a arc like this and then it's also just these are also bristles so they're not like they're like not rubber rubber rubble rubber bristles they mix in my mascaras a lot and so this one I would always put pair with a different one but if I find the right combo I really do like this it does volumize not necessarily curl as much it does kind of lengthen and volumize but this is not my favorite but it's not a bad mascara so I do like this one but it's not like the best one out there, if you know what I mean. Like, I like my Maybelline Last Sensational better, but this one is still a so pretty good one. Um, this, I would say this one's probably in between these. So, like, this one's in the middle. This one's, like, intense, natural, and kind of in between. I have lip products. I know I mentioned, I'm pretty sure these two in that video, the Maybelline, the Elixir. It's more of a gloss, and it's, like, a darker shade. So, I don't, I don't love these, but it's more of a personal thing. They have a little bit stronger scent, but... It's more of a personal thing because it's like a thicker gloss that's colored. And I'm not necessarily into those glossy. Like, it moves around a little bit. Let me put it on. It's very nice. It is a little bit sticky. I don't really tend to go for stickier products, but I feel like it makes them last a little bit longer than if it wasn't sticky. It's kind of move around and separate a little bit. I would not wear this on its own, but if you put it on top of a lipstick like I just did, it looks pretty good. Also, I have these lipsticks. I don't know which one this is. I mean, they're the color sensational. This one's like a more of a natural shade in pink sand. I think this one's... I've had this lipstick for a while. It's more of like a sheer one, a light pink. And then I have this one, which I really like. Oh, this is the Inti Matte in the shade Toasted Truffle. I love the shade. I just got this time for like, oh, look at how pretty that shade is. So I love the Inti Matte. This one is not bad, but I never really reached for it. Um, but the Inti Mattes, I really like. They're natural. They're not They're not really drying at all compared to my MAC lipsticks that are matte. Those ones are a lot more drying than these are. They're good price. 
They last quite a while. I mean, if you're eating and stuff, they're not a liquid lipstick, so they are going to wear off. But they're just a classic matte lipstick. So if you're looking for that, you would really like that. Okay, so those are all of the products that I have from Maybelline. Let me know some of your favorite products from Maybelline down in the comments. Also, some that you don't really like because I would really like to stay away. There's not really any that I have, like, complete dud with. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Please thumbs this video up if you like Best in Worst series. I hope you hope you all subscribed and stay tuned for some future videos I have coming. I have some fun ones planned. I'd love for you to become a part of the Simply Whole family. Until then, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye you guys!